Well, if you need some healthy recipes for the new year, Katie Wells has over 200 of them, and they're all designed for busy families using affordable, real food. The Wellness Mama Cookbook is Katie's latest project. She has millions of followers on social media and her Wellness Mama website. We're so excited to have her here today to make one of the recipes from the cookbook. It smells great already. Tell me what we're making today. So we're making shepherd's pie, and actually, um, I'll clarify, it can be also called cottage pie, and the difference is what the meat used. Okay. So technically with beef, you would call it cottage pie, and with lamb, you would call it shepherd's pie. Okay. Um, but the great thing is it's super versatile, so you can use whatever you have. You can even use bison or turkey or whatever meat you prefer. And normally you'd see it with um, mashed potatoes on the top, but we're, exactly. we're sneaking in something really healthy. Exactly. I'm a big fan of sneaking in vegetables into food, for, especially for my kids sake. And so we're using cauliflower in place of the mashed potatoes. If you like potatoes and eat potatoes, of course you can use those or even sweet potatoes. Uh, it's like I said, it's one of the most versatile recipes I have. Um, and it's also one of the easiest to, to come together. Okay, great. How do we so, start? So um, I often do this too. I'll pre-make when I'm making beef for another meal, I'll just scramble a couple extra pounds so that this meal is ready to go in about 10 minutes when all you have to do is steam the cauliflower. Oh, that's a good idea. So two pounds of meat, whatever you want it to be, it could be beef, lamb, or turkey. Um, then it, two onions that are chopped and then sauteed, and then also mixed vegetables, which are peas and carrots in this one. Okay, so that's just a bag of frozen vegetables. Exactly, which okay. also keeps it really budget friendly and reduces the chopping. Um, and then to that, you just add one egg as a kind of a binder. I leave out the gravy in this recipe just because that's one of the most time consuming steps. Sure. And you can really mimic a lot of the flavor when you add the onions in because they cook down while it's cooking and really add in that extra savory flavor. Nice. Um, and in the cookbook, I do tell people that you can mix this by hand. And that's a shout out to my kids because they love this step of mixing anything by hand. Right. But of course, you don't have to use your hands, especially if you're in front of a camera and don't have a sink. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just going to be the base of it. And while I'm doing this, you can actually start on the topping, okay. which is a mashed cauliflower. And to that, you're going to add some basil, oregano, garlic, and salt and pepper, which I've already pre-mixed just for simplicity. Okay. And then um, some cream cheese and butter, which if you need a yeah, spoon to thanks. get those in. All right. So tell us how you cook the cauliflower beforehand. Yeah. I just put a little bit of water in the pan and steam it until it's fork tender and, and can crumble pretty easily. And then my most used kitchen tool, the immersion blender. Yeah, if you don't have period. one of these, uh, this is a really cool tool, an immersion blender. All right, the, the trick with it is you kind of need to have the blades underneath. Right, and then you just kind of mash it down until it all gets smooth. And I pre-mixed them just so people could see kind of the texture you're aiming for in the end, um, in case we don't have time to fully assemble it. All right, so you just cook the cauliflower like five to seven minutes and then drain it. Exactly. And I try to do as much as I can in a single pan. I'm not a big fan of dishes. I don't think most people are. Right. Um, so I'll use often a big skillet that's a deep skillet, and I'll cook the meat in it, take the meat out, put the onions in it, um, then cook the vegetables in it, and then take all that out and put it in here and cook the cauliflower in it as well, just to minimize my dishes, because I feel like I do enough dishes as it is. Look at this, y'all. Your kids will never know that this isn't mashed potatoes. And the thing about the immersion blender, I think, is that it, it gives you that really smooth consistency. Exactly. And if you don't have an immersion blender, you can do it even with a potato masher or a fork if you have a little more time. Um, or a regular blender works well if you can mash it down with some kind of a tamper or... Would a food like processor work, A food too? processor also would work. And even, honestly, a um, mixer will work. It just takes a little more time. Okay. So you spend a little more time than we're spending right here. Exactly. But already you can see the consistency is looking like mashed potatoes. So you put that on there, and then you're just going to spread just gonna the spread cauliflower on. mash on top. Exactly. And then the final step, if you want to do it, is to add some grated cheese on top and then just um, bake it in the oven. That The cheese is definitely optional. I know I have a lot of moms who read who have allergies. So there's an egg in this that you can leave out mm -hmm. if you can't do egg. Um, if you don't do dairy, you can put a couple tablespoons of coconut milk in there instead of the cream cheese. Mm -hmm. And you can use coconut oil instead of the butter, which um, it does have a little bit more of a sweet flavor. People think of coconut as a more sweet taste, but honestly, the cauliflower is a more dominant flavor. And the two of them together, it really cancels out the coconut taste at all. This is going to be a great recipe for your family. I know they're going to enjoy it. It's super healthy for you too. Katie, thanks so much. Thanks Appreciate so much you being with us today. This recipe is online at newschannel5.com. And you can also find it in the Wellness Mama cookbook, which is available now. Check out wellnessmama.com for more information. Up